Hello and welcome. So today's video is about the PSMT. It's not this term. I'm not giving you the task sheet now. Um, you will get the task uh, after camp next term. Now we're scheduled, like the other classes, to do PSMT practice. I haven't found any resources about that. Um, so I'm just going to share with you roughly what the PSMT is like and some sort of general ideas, general tips. And if you want to give it a crack, just sort of exercise a little bit, um, I do have a challenge thing for you to try uh, if there's some time at the end of the video. So just to break down what PSMT is, because I know that some of us in the class are new to the school, and so you may not have heard this word before. So it stands for Problem Solving and Modeling Task. The red letters together makes PSMT. Um, but what is it? Well, basically, you are writing an assignment um, that you have been working on to solve a sort of uh, general problem, general task. Um, sounds really scary, but I find it's really... Out of all the kinds of assignments you get out there, like writing a research paper about some Egyptian uh, pharaoh in a tomb somewhere... I find this type of assignment task quite fun because I do it all the time, particularly when I'm making things. So uh, here's my journey. Now, you may have noticed that I have a strange pencil case. Okay, so I have gone through uh, school having a pencil case, something like this, maybe not with Pokemon on it, but roughly this form factor. But uh, the frustration for me was that all the items I really wanted were always at the bottom, like a, my rubber, my pencil sharpener, a um, bunch of highlighters, and then you got your scissors, um, glue sticks, calculator somewhere in there, and you're always, there's not really much organization inside them. And the things I really wanted uh, were always hard to find, or a lot of the time you think you've lost it, but really it's just at the bottom of the pencil case. I don't know how many of us can relate to that. So I tried maybe, um, hang on, try to scroll here. I've tried these pencil cases where they're not as deep. Uh, but again, the volume is not that great. Uh, like, for example, I can't fit like giant scissors in here very well. And I don't think I can fit my maths calculator in there. Some of those important bits. So it wasn't, it wasn't for me. Um, I tried do, using these. So I, I I saw my friend, he's in he's into like EDC, which is like everyday carry. And they're basically people who are fanatical about knives and pens and notebooks um, and army looking gear. And I thought, hey, maybe I could use that and I could stuff like highlighters here instead of instead of like a knife or anything like that. So I tried that for a while. It was nice and compact, but what ended up happening was that um, I'm very spare of the moment when I want to use like highlighters or whiteboard markers or pens and stuff like that. And I had to yank out the items I wanted from underneath of these elastic bands. And that didn't work with my personality of always being really sort of spontaneous with grabbing resources like pens and highlighters and rulers and all that sort of thing. So this didn't work out for me, so I threw it away. Um, one very kind student has actually made one of these for me. so. They realized that I was a bit fanatical about cats, particularly this little character here. Her name is Chemistry Cat, hence the ribbon. And uh, she had uh, prepared this for me. I think it was like a Christmas or Easter present or something like that, where she has painted Chemistry Cat's head and put a ribbon around it. Uh, and it was fantastic, except um, some of the paint started to flake away, so I had to sort of put it on the shelf so it wouldn't get more deteriorated. But also there's not a lot of room in here to fit um, pens, calculators, scissors, and so forth. So again, it didn't really work out for me. So what I ended up doing is I threw together a prototype. And this is what I came up with. It's held, I just got some really cheap timber. Um, I just, I think I even used super glue in some of the joinery uh, just to get it done. Uh, some off cuts of wood, things like that. But you can see the items I have laid around the bench. Well, maybe not this remote controller. But I had intended to have a spot specifically for highlighters. Uh, I wanted to have a spot for my ruler, a compact ruler to sort of cap. And then you can, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's some, some of my whiteboard markers there. And I've got some dividers. I've even got like a, a razor and stuff like that. Even a mini calculator is in here. And my thought was that I could have this and I could just yank the 
highlighters, at, uh, sorry, whiteboard markers out of the box without it being uh, held down uh, by uh, Velcro or, or elastic bands or anything like that. I didn't have a zipper to worry about. I could just grab it and go. And uh, here's just another view of the dividers. Uh, once I have a th think about it, um, I had a thought with my dividers here. You might notice there's one really long divider here. And that was so I could put the scissors in there. I was hoping the scissors could sit upright because when they were lying down, it meant that anything underneath the scissors here was, I couldn't reach it. Um, I also thought about my big, big calculator for like nerd type of maths. Uh, there's a space for that too. Um, yeah, so that was the prototype I had. Some things I had to think about was how tall do I make this part of the toolbox? So if I made that area too tall, then if you can imagine that will be the wall back there, I would have very, very small area for me to actually grip with my fingers to actually pull out the, that's supposed to be fingers by the way, pinching. Uh, I wouldn't be able to access them very well, but it would keep them from falling over. So I had to find like a compromise. And what I guess what I ended up doing was I ended up uh, standing the pen up and then sort of going, okay, about three quarters of the pen height uh, should be enough to keep it from falling over, um, but also give me plenty of, of uh, space to pull it out from. And that's how I decided uh, this, this height here. Then I had to decide what this height would be, some of the internal dividers, and that, det and that was uh, determined by certain things like, okay, if I'm going to grab this, If I was going to grab this, then I didn't want to have bulky things right here that would block my hand uh, from actually gripping the handle. Uh, so I decided to have the tall things located in the front or the back of the box, but not the center bit. So I want to have short things. So I had short dividers down here for small items like my you know, little uh, razor, uh, correcting whiteout stuff. Uh, there's a little stapler down here as well. So that's why I made them a little bit shorter. And uh, other bits was, okay, so I've figured out figured out the side height, figured the divider's height, but how tall should this be? Well, I kind of did that by eye. And uh, also wanted something to have the aesthetic proportions. So I think this sort of proportions looks quite nice, but if I made it too tall, I think it just doesn't look very nice. If I made it too squat, then again, I, I don't think it looks that nice. So I, I liked this shape the most, this proportion. Uh, the other thought was, okay, well, how long do I want my toolbox to be? And I just did lots of things like, okay, my, my scissors, if I draw my scissors down here, okay, how long are the scissors? How big is my calculator? I wanted to see if it, how long it needed to be to fit the largest items, but I also wanted to keep the box as small as I can in terms of its length, because I didn't want to carry around this briefcase looking thing. I wanted to keep it compact as possible, going for space efficiency. So these are all the things that I did, and that involved a lot of maths, you know, just sitting there with, uh, maybe not like algebra kind of maths, and maybe not like trigonometry or anything like that, but I was trying to figure out dimensions. That is number thinking. And then once I knew all my dimensions, then I knew what kind of how much wood I needed to use, and so on. So there's a lot of maths involved. Hence, this fits really nicely with the problem-solving modeling task for maths. Now, once I built this prototype, and I think you've all seen me walk around with it, some of the other teachers um, saw me walking around with it, and they asked if I could make them one. Or I think they just said they liked, they liked it. Uh, and I said, okay, I'll make you one. And, they, and, I, and I made a couple. So, I actually made a nicer one, this time with dovetails, which are these little joints here, uh, and I think it looked really, really nice. Uh, one thing I, I didn't like about this prototype was the, the timber here looks kind of ugly, like the striations of, of the timber grain was a little bit coarse for, for a small object. I think if it was really far away, like zoomed out, it's not too bad, but when you're looking at it really closely every day, I don't know, the wood grain does seem distracting to me. So I wanted something that had a bit of a whiter grain and then it's smoother. So I swapped it for a different type of timber. 
Um, however, I didn't really like these knots, um, so I, 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 I changed my mind. But I really liked uh, the, the contrast here, so I used some Jarrah, which is uh, Western Australian timber. And it ended up being really smooth. I also changed the shape of this handle here. I don't think you can tell, but it's actually oval shaped rather than round. And I just found that it was a nicer way to grip the, 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 the handle rather than having a perfectly round one. And I also didn't make it go all the way through. Again, I thought that looked a bit cleaner. It looked like nicer, in my opinion. And then the dividers, um, this time around, I actually just made them evenly spaced apart rather than having... Uh, I don't know if you could see in this other photo. There, This one's narrow, this one's wider, this one's narrow. So they're all a bit over the place. So I was making this for someone else, and I wasn't sure what they were going to put into it. But I certainly found... One thing I did know is that this... Oh, that's supposed to be a highlighter. Did that show up? Nope. What about this highlighter? Nope. All right, then, what about this color? Nope. My apologies, everybody. I'll use white. <laughs> um, I, I always found that this design, this aspect of my, my own uh, tote box was the most useful because I could stick lots and lots of pens, whiteboard markers, Sharpie pens, even scissors and rulers. Uh, I found that to be the most useful part of the entire box. So... That's what I went with, and I, I left, again, open planning, just one really long one at the at the back, and sort of just general purpose, wide and low ones back there. And I think it looked a lot nicer, and then someone else also saw that I had one, and they wanted me to make the one, so I made it again. So this is my third one. Uh, this time round, I went changed the type of wood, so it doesn't have uh, those uh, knots in them. So this one here is Tasmanian oak, a lot more durable. Um, but when I put the, the, the wood finish on it, it did sort of make this more of a cream color rather than the really nice, well, I thought it looked nice, this sort of pale uh, light uh, pine there. So I wasn't as happy with the coloring, but uh, it was certainly a lot more durable. And I started to refine the shape. And the dividers here, I decided to change my mind. So there's three dividers instead of four. And instead of having one really long one, I decided it's probably a bit more useful to have a space like a like a square uh, section there for like sticking. You can imagine like glue sticks could go here and, and your rubbers. I thought that might be a better design. I don't know how it played out because I ended up giving it away. So this one went to a def another teacher. And my intention was to make a fourth one, and that would be my own personal one. But I just never got around to it. But. Um, so this entire journey, I have been trying different solutions and then they never really worked out for me. So I ended up making my own solution and did a lot of thinking about how big it was going to be and where things were going to go, how tall, all the dimensions, what kind of material I was going to use, how affordable it was going to be, the aesthetics of the proportions. Okay, and then through use, I found that some things worked well, some things didn't work well, and so I've made refinements. As you can see, I've made changes along the way. I just want to highlight some key points of PSMT. You basically are writing an assignment, and you are journaling it or giving me a story. So think of it like somebody on YouTube where they're giving you like a vlog of their day, where there's like they start wake up in the morning and there's probably way too much uh, footage of them doing a coffee making montage. Then they hop in the car and go for a walk, open a thousand doors, and you see their feet walking to places, and then hanging out with people who are really cool and having a lot of fun and doing things. Or maybe they like, hey, we're going to go try and get something at the shops. Oh, no, they're closed. So we're going to have to change our plans. We're going to go this way. We're going to try this other shop. They don't have the coolest stuff there, but we're going to just make it work. And you see them sort of give you the journey of their day as they sort of roll with the punches. That's basically what you are going to do in writing. You're making a math assignment, and you're giving a journal or you're basically just telling the full, complete story of how you've came up with your results. So this is, at the moment, the best result I've had so far. Um, and, oh, sorry, what was that? Yeah, uh, when I had students in the past who did this assignment, granted, they were grade sevens and there's a brand new to them, the thing that really disappointed me with those assignments was that they, they held back some of the important story elements. They would tell me, they would tell me like, oh yeah, I'm doing an assignment about a pencil case and this is what I got. They didn't really give me any story as to all the maths they had used, 
Like I could tell you some maths about these proportions I use. I could tell you about the maths, how I got the dimensions of this box, uh, maths of how I managed to get these dividers to work, but that would be missing in their assignment. So just make sure you include anything that involves your, any numbers that you've used to solve your answer, to, to get your solution. Um, the other bit is that I saw that they didn't have iterations. All right, the best solutions comes from several iterations, meaning you revised, you, you like, I first tried this, and then it didn't work as well as I thought, so I changed my answer to this, and then there's still some more improvements, and then I went with this. Those are the bits we want to see. Please tell us in your story the early ideas and how you may have dismissed them and what qualities you kept and what qualities you uh, threw away. So please include that. Uh, other bits is to acknowledge where you got your information from. So for me, um, I got my inspiration from this, from my woodworking hobby, because th this is a design that's used a lot for storing hammers and screwdrivers. Granted, they don't have like dividers here uh, like this, but it's a general purpose toolbox for storing beers or hammers, screwdrivers, saws, etc. Uh, for you, you might get inspiration from Googling some basic numbers, like what's the average number of people in a household, or you might need to Google search uh, the circumference of the planet, or you might need to Google search, you know, um, the average income of a family, you know, whatever it is that you need to know to then start putting together your solution. Um, oh, yes, and show your maths. Uh, when, you, when you show where your information came from, acknowledge it in your story, like, you know, uh, initially, um, this product was, was going to be applied. However, after talking with experts in the field, such as my dad or I know an uncle or a friend of the family informed me that this would be a better way to go. Or you might even have things like you're just talking with your friends and they say, hey, have you thought about this? Or maybe they just said, oh, that's interesting. I, my, my solution was this idea. And you might go, oh, maybe that's actually better than my own idea. So maybe I'll adjust something, something like this, but I'll make it my own or I'll have my own spin on it, that sort of thing. Uh, and you acknowledge it also in a bibliography. I'm pretty sure you would have to do a bibliography. Otherwise, you're just making stuff up uh, and show your maths. So those are the main qualities that we're looking for. Don't get too overwhelmed. Just give me a journal. If you have that in your head, that whatever you hand in in writing, is it like a journal telling a good story from the very beginning to the very end? If you do that, I think you'll tick most of the boxes of the assignment. And speaking of that, um, I just want to go to some of the resources from last year. I don't think they've been released for the 2022, but here's some, some things here. They've got little diagrams of the problem solving process. Um, you can see how it starts from identify and specify the problem to be solved. So for me, it was, I wanted a pencil case. I want, it needed to fit a scissors and a full-size calculator and, and easy to reach for highlighters and whiteboard markers. Make assumptions and just find the essential variables. So it had to be big enough, had to be compact, had to fit all those things and not fall over. Do the maths to get a solution. So I draw up my, draw up my dimensions in my box. Okay, implement the model and report on the results. So I built the product, prototype. And then I reported to myself, of course, because I'm the, I'm the client as well, uh, what worked well, what didn't work well. So from there, um, I went back to the drawing board and made some new changes, made a new solution. So the handle's different, the dividers are different. And then I built a second one and then make further refinements and iterations. And so you can see how it's a circular kind of procedure. And if, eventually you have to give up or maybe you simply run out of time and therefore you would analyze and assess the model. The model is your product, your solution, your suggestion, um, and how good it was. You know, what are the good qualities? What are some bits that, that aren't as good and would need further refinement, for example? Um, another important document here, uh, yeah, they're all just about the process. The main one I want to go to is, these are some headings you might want to use in your finished polished assignment. And they seem to go over things like, uh, obviously, you could give some titles like your teacher's name, your name, give it a title like, you know, best pencil case ever. Okay, and you got your introduction, which will be introducing people to the problem. So when I gave you the start of the video, 
I introduced you to my dilemma, which was I never really had a pencil case that worked for me. And through that, I explained what my main purpose is and what my plan was. I was going to design a wooden box and it's going to involve some maths to figure out the dimensions and the proportions. Um, you can collect some basic facts. So you may need to know the circumference of the planet or you may need to know how many days there are for uh, Venus as it goes around the sun or something. You need to find some actual numbers, uh, make a bullet point list, some assumptions. So assuming I'm, I certainly made some assumptions when I made a box for someone else, I assumed that they would also fill it with pencils because that's what I had in mind. And that's what they saw when they asked me if I could make them one. So I guess I didn't ask them, Hey, what do you want to put in it? I just assumed they probably want to use it for the same purpose as me. Um, all sorts of things. Then you have the story. So it looks like they're using the same language as I have been. Didn't give us a really detailed story of how you went through with your research or your problem solving, all that sort of thing. And then you would have uh, some sections of your of your assignment where you are criti critiquing, critiquing your solution um, just like I've given you my critique of my own solutions in my my uh, pencil case, uh, pencil case box, and so on. Uh, yep, it does seem that we need a bibliography acknowledging where information has come from. Uh, appendices, I guess that'll be things like maybe you want to attach um, like price tags of different products you were searching for and you had used in your model. So I think a while ago we had things like design a garden bed. And they had to include like, you know, images of their, of the plants that they had chosen and, and materials they wanted to use. So photographs of those and on, as an appendices. Uh, word count, 10 pages or 2000 words, whichever comes first. <laughs> Looks like some kids in the past had done a lot. But yeah, I don't, I, 10 pages seems like a lot, but think about it. You, you are telling a story where you are always going back to the drawing board. So if you, if you give yourself at least two or three iterations, then I think you'll hit that word, that page limit or word limit. No problem. Um, so I wouldn't worry about, oh, it's so much writing. I think it'll just naturally come out of you as you start just telling people about how you did it. Uh, I guess, look, this is a long video, I know, but I was hoping to give you more info. Um, th there'll be a task sheet here about, look, uh, I guess I'll, I'll skip over this task sheet here, but can you see that the main headings here formulate, which is basically introducing us all to the problem and introducing all the math that you are going to be applying and solving, which is your, how you went about doing it. Are you using the math, showing the maths itself? equations, drawings, diagrams, that sort of problem solving skills. Um, then your evaluation, so critiquing, thinking about, reflecting upon your solution. Um, it looks like a strong one here, justifying your, your reasons. So like, I went with this idea because of these reasons. Um, it's really uh, important. Communication, so try to use a lot of mathematics, storytelling, it seems was a highlight here. Units seem to be an important one uh, for a physical object, uh, things like that. So I will end the video because it's so long. But I hope this has been helpful to give you a mental perspective. Oh, oh, as, as a closing, uh, if there's any time left of this lesson, you can have a crack at doing something like this. Uh, what are the logistics of trying to walk all the way from home to the Gold Coast? So it'll be things like, okay, well, how far do I have to walk? Cool. Google that answer, or maybe use Google Maps, who knows? Then you go to ask yourself, okay, well, how um, how long of the day am I actually gonna do some walking here? I can't walk 24 seven, if it's gonna take me multiple days to walk there, so maybe I'm gonna walk, I don't know, four hours a day, six hours a day, I don't know. Let's actually figure that out, if there's 24 hours a day. So let's say I wake up at 8 a.m. and I go to sleep at 8 p.m. Okay, uh, well, we need breakfast time, so breakfast. Uh, I'll need lunch break. I'll need a dinner break, at least. And so what time is left remaining? Okay, do I want to rest? Do I want to have more breaks? I don't know. So I get a number of how many hours I could, I could walk in a day. Now I need to figure out, oh, well, how fast do I walk? So... 
Some of you are like, oh, I can walk really fast. Well, if you're going to do multiple days, maybe you want to pace yourself so you don't wreck yourself on day one. Maybe you need to sort of have a comfortable pace. What is that walking pace? So you can, you can use that number versus the total distance. Also consider that you're going to get hungry, so you may want to stop in to uh, maybe cafes or, or restaurants along the way. Where are they? Okay, does that change your total distance and therefore change your time? You may want to sleep in the open just to be, you know, cheap and thrifty, or maybe you want to, you know, uh, plan your itinerary so that you hit certain restaurants and then you finish up every night at a hostel or hotel or something like that so you've got somewhere to sleep at night. So uh, have at it, give it a go. And just give you, keep a mental track of the, the story of how you've gone about solving this. All right, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.